Here at Helmuth Ford, we are a small town dealership with no hassle and no pressure. Delta Fire and Rescue presents the Delta Haunted House at 109 North Center Street in Delta. Admission is just $10 per person. The Delta Haunted House is open each Friday and Saturday throughout October and on Halloween night from 8 to 10 p.m. Food and drinks will be available for purchase and now accepting cash and most major credit cards. It's the Delta Fire and Rescue Delta Haunted House, Fridays and Saturdays in October and on Halloween night. The Watch Year Opera House presents the Midwest Country Music Organization New Artist of the Year, Jordan Beam, featuring John Griffiths. This Saturday at 7 p.m. Tickets are just $10. Get them at watchyearoperahouse.org or get them at the door. See one of the Midwest's best with Iowa's Jordan Beam this Saturday night, 7 p.m. at the Watch Year Opera House. As these Iowa skies It is time for some real talk here on Steve Shetler Media, and it's brought to us by New Life Community Church in Wellman, Iowa, where this guy, my friend, Pastor Aaron Fleming, is the pastor of that church. Guilty as charged, I am the pastor, the founding pastor Ooh. of New Life Community Church, and uh, yeah. We've You're in like 100 years when you're long gone, they're going to have a picture of you. This was our founding father, Aaron Fleming. Yes, and I'll be long gone and I won't care. Uh, so, anyway. <laughs> New the Life Community Church father. in Wellman. And uh, no matter who the, the founder of your particular church is, uh, and that was actually an excellent segue. This is a good segue. It's the people that make that make the church. Uh, the The Bible talks about how God is building a temple for Himself out of living stones. Yeah, and uh, and and sometimes I wonder if that was a strategic error on God's part. Like God, did you know that like living stones are going to be a little more complicated to work with than <laughs> non living stones? Because living stones have a habit of, of uh, you know, you, you put them in place in the wall that you're building and, and they, they say, I don't like the stone next to me. I'm going to move over a little bit. Or, <laughs> uh, you know, this other stone over here kind of rubs me the wrong way. So I'm just going to climb off the wall and, and go do my own thing over here somewhere. And uh, so, so it's tricky to build with living stones, but God is determined to do it. He is building a a house for himself out of living stones and that's what going to church is like um you're there with other people who love god but might not get along with each other or uh do some things that irk each other and so there's boy you get involved in church and at some point there's going to be some <laughs> conflict and uh some friction and boy isn't that just a great uh a great advertisement for for uh <laughs> but this is real talk go church yeah <laughs> it's it's people but this is what i want to talk about i am i'm kind of on the war path about this this topic that we're going to hit today because uh last week we were talking about worship and we were talking about uh god's gym and exercising our spirit and how kind of the gravitational force of the world is towards um, laziness, laziness. <laughs> I mixed that word up with sloth. I like the word sloth. That's one of our favorite words too. Yeah. We, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> do, don't they? Don't they sloth? Sloth. <laughs> sloth. Sloth. It's very slothy. Yeah, sloth is a good word for <laughs> laziness. <laughs> we don't use the word sloth enough. We're we're just too lazy to. Yes. Like that's we are. <laughs> we're all uh, we're all over the place today. I, yeah, uh, <laughs> we got squirrels along with our sloth. 
<laughs> no, no. The gravitational pull of of the world on our spirit is towards sloth. It's towards depression. It's towards anxiety, and we have to exercise our spirit so that we can break free from the gravitational pull of the world around us. And so, so here's the thing that I'm really kind of fired up about. Um, th- there is in our culture right now, what I believe is a social contagion. Let me explain that. Okay. We, we, we think of a contagion as being a virus, right? Like COVID-19 or the flu or whatever. And, and it's a, a physical bacteria or virus that we, we cough into the air down at, uh, at Subway and, and our cough droplets swirl around and get on somebody mm. else's sandwich and then they eat it. And, um, Yum. And I didn't mean to target any particular restaurant, but, uh, <laughs> You know what I mean, though. You yeah. go to, you go to school, and every year at the beginning of school, like there's this oh, huge yeah. outbreak of sickness because all the kids who are who are uh, relatively isolated go and get packed into school, and and everybody every everybody comes home the first week with a cold or something. So a contagion just spreads naturally, but but that's a that's a disease. That's a, a physical contagion, a virus or a bacteria or something. I'm talking about a social contagion where an idea or a thought or an attitude just spreads. And, and what I'm talking about right now is, uh, is this, this phrase, I'm exhausted. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I can't even. I and can't even. I can't even. I love that phrase. Yeah. I can't even finish my sentence. I don't love that phrase. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. Yeah, I can't e- I'm so tired. I can't even finish my sentence. All right. I- I'm not trying to beat you up if you feel tired. But what I do want to suggest, since this is real talk, I'm going to suggest that we don't know how to get the rest that we actually need. And, and we're, we feel exhausted, but then we do the wrong things to get rest. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I believe that, that what we, what we have settled on, like, like this virus that is running through our culture is if I feel tired, then I need to isolate myself. If I'm tired, I need I need to sit on a soft sofa and scroll through Facebook. I need to disengage my brain. I need to be entertained. And and we got we got so many streaming services now. It's getting yeah. crazy out there. Uh, we used to talk about cable TV and how there were 200 channels with nothing on, and and now it's now it's beyond that. It's yeah. it's bonkers. unlimited. It's unlimited. There, there's still cable TV. I don't know if anybody still has cable, yeah. but but now you got Hulu and and Max and Peacock uh, and Netflix yeah, and Amazon and, and YouTube TV and, and uh, yeah. Fubo for sports yeah. and Tubi, uh, uh, Tubi and Timu or What's, not to be. <laughs> what is? I don't even know what Timu is. I don't know. I, it's not a streaming service, is it? I don't know. <laughs> I <laughs> so, think that's like the the fake uh, eBay or something. Okay, or like Amazon for cheap stuff. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so anyway, there's there's all of these opportunities for us to isolate and check out, and we have come to believe that those are the things that will make us feel rested, but they are not. They are not making us feel rested. In fact, they're giving us anxiety, um, which is exhausting. So maybe when we say, I'm exhausted, maybe maybe that's true. Because depression and anxiety and loneliness do make us feel exhausted. And so we get we get sucked. We are sucked as a culture. We are sucked into this downward spiraling vortex of doom. Yikes. Yikes. It's like a haunted house out there, man. <laughs> Dong. 
You don't have to go to the, the Delta haunted <laughs> house to get scared snotless. Yeah. Uh, but you should go to the Delta <laughs> haunted house and support your local fire department. Um, we should all be so lucky as to have fire coverage like that. Um, exactly. So hats off to the, to the guys and gals down at the Delta fire department. Um, but it's like a horror show out there <laughs> of, of uh, just exhaustion that isn't really exhaustion. So what I want to talk about again for a little bit here is God's gym and what are some exercises that God has given us that will actually uh, make us feel better. They're going to pump <laughs> you up. There it is. Hans and Franz. Ah. Uh, I used to I used to work in a wood shop and and walk around on concrete floors every day and I would get home and my feet would hurt so bad and you know what made my feet feel the best? As if I would go on a run. Wow. It made no sense to me. Yeah. So we get home and and our soul, our spirit, our emotions are exhausted and we want to crawl into a hole and isolate. And you know what will actually make your spirit revive? It's actually connecting with other people. It's not isolation. So I want to I want to read to you uh this this little Bible verse from Hebrews chapter 10. And uh, this is this is every pastor's favorite Bible verse because it proves that you ought to go to church. Uh, <laughs> uh, I laugh, but seriously. Um, all right. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The day, I think that's meaning like last times. So if you feel like you're living in the end of days, um, don't build a bunker in your backyard and go huddle in your bunker. If you feel like this might be the end of days, um, don't give up meeting together. Keep meeting together. Why? Because you need to hear a sermon? No, maybe not, I, which is scary for me to say, Steve. I'm a preacher, mm -hmm. um, and it's the most uh, preaching is the most visible part of my job. But especially if you're listening to me and you're a mature Christian and you've read that, you can read the Bible yourself, honestly. And, and you will get way more from 15 minutes of daily Bible reading than you're ever going to get in a 30-minute sermon from me or any other preacher. That's just the facts. Uh, when I preach, I hope that what I'm doing is I'm just pointing people towards the Bible and saying, um, here's, some, here's some fun, helpful thoughts that I have about the Bible, but uh, this is good food, and you need to eat some of it every day. Uh, so... What what am I, as a pastor, what am I looking for when I go to church? And it's not just pastors, but this could be you too. Is there someone that I can spur on toward love and good deeds? And sometimes, guys, this is just as simple as showing up and um, just, yeah, showing up. I talked... Was it last week that I talked about losing a little bit of weight and my triglycerides mm -hmm. coming down? Yeah. I'll tell you how I lost weight. It's not because I went to the doctor and he said, you should lose some weight and get your triglycerides down. Like he said that, and I lost like four pounds in a year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's like an ounce a week. Uh, <laughs> so that's not too bad, right? But then in, in the space of a couple of weeks, I had conversations with two friends who had both lost over 70 pounds. Wow. And they didn't preach to me. They didn't tell me, Aaron, you're kind of overweight too. You ought to lose a few pounds. There was none of that. It was just their story and the fact that they were doing it. And the one young man said, you know what, Aaron? I just got tired of being fat. So I went and I got myself a therapist because I figured I needed some emotional help. 
And, and then my brother started te to teach me how to do some CrossFit stuff. And I lost enough weight that I could start jogging. And, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what excuse do I have? Yeah. Just, just <laughs> being around somebody who is positive and moving forward did something for me that no amount of a doctor telling me that I needed to change could do. So, um, yeah, where are we? Kind of on uh, one of our bunny trails again here, but <laughs> but I think our listeners are are accustomed to that by now. Get with basically, you're saying get with some people that are going to kind of give you that inspiration, and uh, obviously, you want to meet with other Christians and churchgoers. Yeah, um, and and uh, so so it's it's being with people. Who are like yeah some people are kind of Debbie Downers, or or uh, you know to be fair Douglas Downers, because <laughs> men can be Downers too. Yes. We're all about equality here. Uh, it, yeah, some people can be Downers and drag on you, but you need to find some positive people because that's where energy really comes from. Romans chapter twelve tells us to practice hospitality and you got to practice because sometimes we're not very good at it and and we got to try it and um and and get better at it uh i i built a fire pit in my backyard and i'm trying to practice hospitality by having people come over for s'mores i don't have to cook them a full meal uh <laughs> yeah but but everybody likes marshmallows right uh and so I'm trying to practice that. And the other day I, I did that on my day off. I had some friends come over. We've been talking for like 18 months. Oh yeah, we ought to get together sometime. You should come over to our house for supper. Blah, 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 blah. Never did it. Finally, on my day off, I had them come over and we just had a great time. And it was refreshing. Um. Let me just another shout out, shout out for ways to refresh yourself other than scrolling Facebook and um, and watching Netflix. Kind of almost anything creative is going to do more for your soul and more for your emotions than vegging out. Um, not saying you can't ever veg out. I found a new Australian comedy show on Netflix. It's called <laughs> Fisk. Uh, I've been really enjoying that. Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, watch a little Netflix. But on, on my day off, uh, recently, I've been doing a couple of things. Uh, I learned how to make baba ganoush. And I know you're a real adventuresome eater. <laughs> uh, I, I got some free eggplant somehow. And, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and... Uh, so you, you roast the eggplant and take it out of the skin and mix it with tahini oil and a little bit of lemon juice and, and some salt and, and blend it all up in the food processor and it makes like a chip dip or you dip yeah. pita bread in it and I can tell that you're really excited about this. Um, but I made homemade baba ganoush and I was just really proud of myself. Well, I'm proud of you. <laughs> You Thank don't you. invite me over when you have <laughs> Baba Ganoush. I, I was thinking that one of these times you'd invite me over for a, a Iowa game and I would bring a, a nice bowl of fresh Baba Ganoush. Maybe some s'mores. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep do, the Bob, Baba Ganoush. Do, do you love squash? No. <laughs> Because <laughs> I ran out of eggplant, but but we've got this. Uh, we got equal, this equally as gross. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, come on. <laughs> Real so, talk. So we got we got way too much patty pan squash this summer and the vine won't stop producing. And burn uh it. So, <laughs> so burn it to the ground. No more squash. Whew. Uh so so I thought to myself, well it's not it's not eggplant, but I could roast some squash. So and uh, so now I make squash or squash, and, squash, as some people call it. Yeah, I don't call it that. That's, those people are weird. <laughs> no offense, but that's <laughs> stupid. Uh, <laughs> Before they go to Washington. Yeah, yeah. My dad always said Washington, but he never said squash. So I don't understand that. So I make squash a ganoush since I don't have eggplant. Um, my my point here is. 
Well, I also made some Irish soda bread, uh, which isn't that great, but it was creative and kind of yeah. fun. And, and uh, so what, what can you do? Uh, make, make some music. I'm, I'm trying to play the guitar these days and, and just trying to be creative. So those, those are the things that really revive our souls uh, in the same way that exercise actually makes your body feel better than just sitting down on the sofa after work. Um, gathering with people, practicing hospitality, doing something creative, making a new food, learning an instrument, reading a book, writing a poem. Those are the kind of things that exercise our spirit, that get us ready to actually tackle the difficult things in life, like depression and anxiety and loneliness. And uh, that's what gets the ball rolling. So we're going to wrap up with this thought here. If you don't have a church family, uh, New Life in Wellman is waiting for you to join us. We meet at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning in the Parkside Activity Center up in the North Park. And uh, we got some midweek events that you can participate to. And then there's uh, once a month, there's the Saturday morning men's breakfast and just some different stuff like that, different ways to connect so that you can build up your inner person in God's gym. Yeah. We're here to pump. You are. are. All right, let's get out of here. We do uh, thank Pastor Aaron and a New Life Fellowship or New Life Community Church. There we go. New Life Community Church in Wellman for being our sponsor of Real Talk. We'll do it again next week. See you soon.